things die a lot in Dark Souls. This guy, that guy, these guys, and especially you, right? But have you ever noticed how they die? Some of them fizzle away, others turn into silly floppy bodies. You see this all over Bethesda games too, like Elder Scrolls or Fallout. Oh, the joys of ragdoll physics. How does it work, and why do developers choose to make their corpses so silly? Let's find out. Ragdoll physics simply means that the movement of the corpse is calculated using techniques similar to how cloth is animated. To understand this, let's first look at how characters are animated. Many games, including Dark Souls, use a technique called skeletal animation, which is exactly how it sounds. There is a rig, or skeleton, that represents the bones and joints of a character. This makes it easy to define movements for all characters that share a similar skeleton, despite having completely different appearances. This can be used for inanimate objects, as well as human or animal characters, as long as they all share the same skeleton. This is why we can use the same gestures, regardless of what armor or build we have. It's important to note that all the joints are in a hierarchy. If the hand moves, the fingers move. If the thigh moves, then the lower leg moves. And once he takes a step forward, the entire body must move. While this might seem obvious, it's important to think about how the skeleton is connected like a chain and how movement in a body part higher on the hierarchy is going to affect all of its subparts. In earlier 3D games, enemy deaths were pre-rendered, or they were fixed and not dynamic, kind of like the fizzling animation we saw earlier. But as processing power increased, developers were able to animate enemies collapsing and dying in real time, without having to create a preset animation beforehand. The best way to accomplish this without denting performance was to use ragdoll physics. Now let's think about this again. Imagine a real ragdoll. It's basically a person made out of cloth, and we know that animations are made with a skeleton, but how do we make that skeleton look all floppy? Well, we quite literally turn them into cloth. We use the same physics as any waving flag, tarp, or curtain you'd see in modern games. To really understand this, let's start with some basic particle physics. Don't leave yet, I promise this won't be that bad. A particle is just a dot, an object that isn't affected by wind or any outside force we don't care about. So let's pretend it's a fly. If our little insect friend is flying from point A to some point B, he will be flying at some speed over some distance for some time, right? And if we know two of these things, we can easily find the third. For example, if the fly is going at a constant speed of 10 miles per hour, and he flies for one hour, we know that he flew 10 miles. Easy, right? And between speed and time, the one that keeps changing is the time. You'll often see this represented by a delta t, uh, the delta is the triangle, or the derivative with respect to t, but that all just means the change in time. It's important to recognize what exactly is changing, because let's say the fly goes in some curvy twisty path, as most flies do. Whenever you hear curves and physics, you probably have to use calculus, which is all about change. It's not that bad though, I promise. In this case, we can estimate the fly's movement using Euler's method. So first, let's visualize the fly's trip on a graph by showing where he flew and where he was at each instance of time. Now let's say that after one second, the fly is here. We can draw an arrow pointing in the direction of where he was flying at that precise instance, and then we can draw other arrows at other instances of time. The closer together these changes in time are, the more accurately the arrows show the fly's path. This is another example of why a higher frame rate gives a smoother picture. Now in reality, cloth physics simulations use a similar technique called Verlet integration. This is basically the same as Euler's, except instead of keeping track of changes in time, it uses the fly's current and previous positions to estimate its next position. 
but don't worry about this too much right now. Just know that this is part of how we can deal with curvy, wavy physics. And if you haven't learned calculus, you actually understand a lot more than you think if you've followed me so far. Okay, but back to games. In a game, a piece of cloth can be represented as a grid or mesh of squares, with various constraints set between all points that are next to and across from each other. These constraints move points based on forces like gravity or the wind, they handle collisions with other objects, and they'll respond to movements like if we tug on it or push it around. These constraints also make the points want to return to a resting position, which is the original flat grid. This is best shown in this cloth simulation made by GitHub user Dissimulate. You can see the cloth reacting to gravity, to me tugging on it, and it uses Verlet integration to curve and wave, and the squares are trying to return to their original resting positions. So there's a five minute version of how cloth physics basically works, but how do we add this to a body? Well, recall how skeletons are used for animations and all the different bones create a hierarchy of movement. The upper arm moves and the lower arm moves. Well, we can view the bones and joints as a special chain of points and lines, kind of like that cloth grid, but with more rules. We can use Featherstone's algorithm to figure out how all the different parts are affected when one part has a force applied to it. In other words, Featherstone's algorithm is a set of instructions to help us find out how the body should move when one or more parts are kicked and shoved around. And boy, do I love kicking and shoving those bodies around. So that's how ragdoll physics works. Thank you guys all so much for watching and supporting me. Be sure to subscribe if you want more and leave me a comment with any suggestions on topics you'd like me to cover. I hope you guys have a happy day wherever you are. Bye.